Now in this video, we want to explore what's the connection between Web3 and blockchains. So I've talked about the reversal of flow of value that the creators will now own more equity in the platform itself, and there won't be any central authority that'll get rich, right? So uh, Web3 is all about democratization. Uh, I'm not sure if I said it correctly, democratization, it's a, it's a big word. Distribution or distributed networks and decentralization. So that's what Web3 is all going to be about. Now, there is no technology that does it better right now than blockchains. Now, people are experimenting with DAGs, which is uh, directed acyclic graphs, and there have been some POCs and MVPs with those, uh, and DAGs, they basically help you uh, produce decentralization and distributed networks, but much faster than blockchains, but it's, uh, I don't think many people are using it in production right now, it's still not very popular. So blockchains is the best bet that we have right now for bringing forth Web3. So, um, Web uh, so blockchains, people are not only using it for better security and persistence of data, but they're also using it for decentralization so that nobody actually owns everything, right? And that's why uh, everything is on blockchains in Web3. So the whole uh, layer on, on top of which everybody's building applications is the blockchain layer. And that's the connection between Web3 and blockchain. So uh, just with a quick diagram, what we can see is that with Web 1.0, we had consumers and then we had producers. So producers used to produce, which were basically, they also owned the platform. They created the content and the consumers could just consume it. With Web 2.0, there were multiple consumers. So you can see these two uh, new arrows, which basically says that the consumers could consume on the platform itself. So with Web 1.0, there was no platform like YouTube, Udemy, or Twitter, where the consumers were also creating content at the same time. But uh, there's, there's still, uh, you know, a very set, very set in stone kind of uh, producers which basically own the platform. So there are people who own YouTube, people who own Udemy, or you know who are going to have the majority of the lion's share. Uh, so producers would always be there. When Web 3.0, there is completely no um, distinction between owners, producers, and creators. They're all one and the same. So the uh, the producers can consume. The producers can also own. The more you produce, the more you own, or you can just consume and still own. Uh, in the sense just by NFTs or if you consume more, you get like those uh, brave at, uh, attention token. So uh, everybody becomes equal here. So um, this kind of a system is very easy to implement on blockchains, okay? Now let's, let's see what blockchains, what type of blockchains are there. So there are permissionless blockchains and there are permissioned blockchains. So permission blockchains are used mostly for B2B applications and permissionless are used for B2C applications. Permission blockchains uh, are private, they're controlled by one authority, right? Even though blockchains are not supposed to be owned or controlled, there are certain ways with the help of which enterprises can still control some things, right? So enterprises, all the, the existing incumbent enterprises, the bigger companies uh, who use, uh, you know, B2B applications or B2B, uh, you know, use cases, they have B2B use cases, they don't necessarily want the control uh, to, you know, go to everybody. So this could, uh, this could be governments, this could be banks, banking systems, and all the other older enterprise companies. So they would have permissioned blockchains. So they would have everything to be private, and everybody would need permission to join, I mean, join this blockchain. And they will be controlled usually by one authority, or they could be controlled by a consortium, like a group of companies, okay, or a group of people inside one company. So they could be permissioned blockchains. And but most of the ones that we uh, hear and talk about, like Ethereum, Solana, and uh, you know Neo blockchain, all of these are permissionless. So anybody can come and join. Anybody can come and become a node. Anybody can come uh, become a verifying node, or anybody can come and get uh, governance tokens based on how much you buy. Uh, anybody can you know start staking, depending on you know obviously how much money you have to uh, start buying those coins. So there is no central authority. Uh, it's all public and it's all permissionless. This is the ideal state, right? And this is what companies are doing for a B2B use case, because companies, when they work with each other, they don't probably want everybody else to uh, come to know their uh, data, right? They don't want everybody access to their personal deals or mergers mergers and acquisitions that are, that are happening, or the government data they don't want to release, or health-related data, which needs some a little bit of privacy. They don't want to release it to everybody. But and then there are hybrid blockchains. They're controlled by one authority with some permissionless processes. So they like people can come in, 
permissionless. People can come in, start staking, start buying coins, start even collecting governance tokens, but there would be one overruling authority who would have the final key, who can tweak the smart contracts, who can tweak the infrastructure, who you know owns the AWS account for the infrastructure, for example, just an example, right? So that's like a hybrid kind of blockchain. So this is what's happening with blockchains and Web3. So I just wanted to clarify that, just wanted to, you know, your brain fog to lift as to why people are using blockchains, why people are so dependent on blockchains and Web3, and why people are saying that uh, people are confusing blockchains with Web3, right? There are separate things. We are building Web3 on top of blockchain, but this is why blockchains are important. All right, so I hope you're enjoying the series. Do subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.